welcome to this plsa design lecture series in today's lecture video i'll be discussing about free charge and evaluate logic which is also known as dynamic cmos logic in dynamic complementary metal oxide semiconductor circuit techniques we can significantly reduce the number of p channel mosfets which is used to implement any logical function the circuit operation of precharge and evaluate is completely based on first precharging the output node to a logic level called as high and subsequently evaluating the output level according to the inputs applied that is first the output node will be precharged to a logic level called as 1 and afterwards the second phase which is called as evaluate phase in that phase the output node or the output level will be checked whether it should be at logic level high or it should be at logic level 0 based on the inputs which we have applied that technique is called as precharge and evaluate technique in precharge and evaluate technique both the phases precharge phase as well as, well as evaluate phase is controlled by a single clock signal called as phi we can understand this precharge and evaluate technique by making use of a nand gate example let us consider an example of nand gate using precharge and evaluate logic so we already know the truth table of nand gate when both the inputs two input nand gate when both the inputs are high the output is low for all other combinations of input the output is high so this particular two input nand gate can be implemented by using precharge and evaluate technique before understanding the circuit diagram of nand gate using precharge and evaluate technique we already know how a nand gate can be implemented by using cmos logic cmos logic comprises of pull up network and pull down network in pull up network we use pmos transistors and in pull down network we use nmos transistors for dot operation pmos transistors are connected in parallel whereas nmos transistors are connected in series because there are two inputs there will be two pmos transistors which are connected in parallel and two nmos transistors which are connected in series so that is how the circuit was designed our circuit will be designed using cmos logic which was already discussed in our previous lecture videos as well but the circuit for precharge and evaluate nand gate is little bit different if we observe we have two series connected nmos transistors n1 as well as n2 which are given with inputs a and b respectively that remains same as it is but in pull up network which come which should have comprised of two pmos transistors connected in parallel but here we have only one pmos transistor which is called as precharge mosfet which is connected to clock called as phi the gate of this precharge mosfet is connected to clock called as phi and in addition to that below pull down network we are using one more mosfet n channel mosfet called as evaluate mosfet whose gate input is again connected to phi the source of this evaluate mosfet is connected to ground whereas the source of this precharge mosfet is connected to logic level high under precharge technique the clock signal is always low when clock signal is low that phase is called as precharge phase so when clock signal is low we already know that pmos transistor when its gate input is given with logic level 0 pmos transistor turns on whereas nmos transistor turns on only when its gate input is made logic level high whereas here if we observe the gate input of this precharge mosfet is equal to 0 whereas the gate input of this evaluate mosfet is connected to 0 so this uh, p, uh, this precharge mosfet is on whereas evaluate mosfet is off so if evaluate mosfet is off it acts as open switch or open circuit condition is created that means there is no connection to this logic level 0 to output node so this evaluate mosfet is completely off there is no point in seeing whether a and b this n1 mosfet as well as n2 mosfet is on or off because there is completely open circuited over here 
the ground is no way connected to output but the output is connected to logic level high the reason is because pre charge mosfet is on there is a definite connection established between the source of this pre charge mosfet to the drain of this pre charge mosfet it acts as a closed switch so when it acts as a closed switch this logic level high will be reflected as output so to be pre charged to a value called as 1 this pre charge phase remains same for all the combinations for all the cases in pre charge phase if we observe we have not considered what happens when a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 0 the reason is very simple because the evaluate mosfet is off whether this n mosfet 1 is on or n mosfet 2 is on that doesn't matter because evaluate mosfet is completely off hence this logic level 0 can never be transferred as output hence there is no point in evaluating whether this mosfet are on or off n1 and n2 is on or off but under evaluate technique we do that so under evaluate technique the clock signal becomes equal to high so when clock signal becomes equal to 1 pre charge mosfet is off whereas evaluate mosfet is on so when evaluate mosfet is on there is a chance that this logic level 0 can be transferred to this output node called as y but that depends whether this n1 mosfet is on and n1 n2 mosfet is on or off so it depends upon this n1 and n2 mosfets whether it is on or off to check whether those two mosfets are on or off when both the inputs are low a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 0 both this n1 mosfet as well as n2 mosfet is off when both the mosfets are off it acts as a open switch zero because this output node cannot be equal to zero because there is no definite connection between this output node to the ground as well as there is no definite connection between the output node to this vdd hence whatever the previous value was there which is logic level high will be saved as it is it will be present as it is next let us consider the second case when a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1 so in our previous case we got to know that when both the inputs are low the output should be high we got that next when a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1 according to the nand gauge to table the output should again be equal to 1 we'll check whether whether we'll get that or not first phase is pre charge phase which is common for all the cases so when clock is equal to 0 pre charge mosfet is on whereas evaluate mosfet is off so because evaluate mosfet is off it acts as open switch open circuit condition is created so no matter uh, whether this n1 is n and n2 is on or off it doesn't matter because evaluate mosfet itself is off so this logic level 0 cannot be transferred as output y so no need to check whether these two mosfets are on or off but because this pre charge mosfet is on there is a definite connection established between the source of this pre charge mosfet and the drain of this pre charge mosfet and hence logic level high will be transferred or reflected as output hence the output will be pre charged to a value called as 1 evaluate technique now we have to evaluate whether the value output should be equal to 1 or not so when clock signal is high the circuit will become in evaluate phase so when clock signal is 1 this pre charge mosfet is off whereas evaluate mosfet is on now because evaluate mosfet is on there is a chance that this logic level high can be transferred or reflected as output but that depends whether this n1 mosfet is on or off and n2 mosfet is on or off when both the mosfets are on only then the logic level zero will be transferred but here because a input is zero and b is equal to 1 n1 mosfet is off whereas n2 mosfet is on because n1 mosfet is off as well as pre charge mosfet is off it acts as open switch and if we observe this output node is neither connected to this ground or it is connected to vdd so because it is isolated the previous state whatever it was there pre charged value which was logic level high will be retained as it is under the valid phase that means when a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1 the output 
is equal to one. Next, the third case, when a is equal to one and b is equal to zero, the output should be equal to one. We already know that according to NAND gate two table. We have to verify that. The first phase is pre-charge phase, where the clock signal is equal to zero. So when clock signal is equal to zero, this pre-charge MOSFET is on and evaluate MOSFET is off. And because of that, this evaluate MOSFET is completely open circuited. So if it is open circuited, there is no connection between this ground and this output Y. So no need to check whether this N1 MOSFET is on or off and N2 MOSFET is on or off. It is pointless. But because this pre-charge MOSFET is on, there is a definite connection established between the source of this pre-charge MOSFET to the drain of this pre-charge MOSFET. And hence, logic level high will be transferred as output. And hence, the output will be pre-charged. Now we have to evaluate whether that logic level high should stay or logic level zero has to be placed over there. The technique is evaluate technique. So for evaluate technique, the clock signal should be equal to high. So when clock signal is high, pre-charge MOSFET is off, whereas evaluate MOSFET is on. So if evaluate MOSFET is on, there is a chance that this logic level zero can be transferred as output, but that depends upon whether N1 and N2 is on or off. So if because A is equal to one and B is equal to zero, N1 MOSFET is on, whereas N2 MOSFET is off. If we observe, pre-charge MOSFET is off as well as this N2 MOSFET is off. So because N2 MOSFET is also off, this logic level zero cannot be transferred as output because there is no open circuit condition here. Similarly, this logic level one can also be not transferred over here. So this output line is completely isolated with respect to logic level zero and logic level high. But the previously stored value, which is the pre-charge value, logic level high will be present as it is. Even under the value technique, the output will be equal to one. When A is equal to one and B is equal to zero, the output is one. Finally, when both the inputs are high, according to NAND gate to table, the output should be equal to zero. The first phase, which is pre-charge phase remains same. When clock is equal to zero, pre-charge MOSFET is on, whereas the evaluate MOSFET is off. So because the evaluate MOSFET is off, it acts as open switch. So there is no connection between this logic level zero to output. Checking this A and B, whether this N1 and N2 is on or off is pointless. But because this pre-charge MOSFET is on, this logic level high will be transferred as output, which is called as pre-charge phase, which is common for all the cases. Next, under evaluate phase, this is very important. This case gives us an idea how this pre-charge evaluate circuit works. Under evaluate phase, the clock signal becomes equal to high. So when clock signal becomes equal to high, pre-charge MOSFET is off, whereas evaluate MOSFET is on. So once this evaluate MOSFET is on, there is a possibility that this logic level zero can be transferred as output or reflected as output. And that depends on whether this N1 MOSFET is on or N2 MOSFET, N1 MOSFET is on or off and N2 MOSFET is on or off. So only when N1 and N2 is on, only then this ground will be reflected as output or logic level zero will be reflected as output. Now, when both the inputs, which are given to N1 MOSFET as well as N2 MOSFET, the gate inputs of both N1 MOSFET and N2 MOSFET are high, both these NMOS transistors N1 and N2 are on. So when both the MOSFETs are on, if you observe complete pull down network is completely on, whereas this pre-charged MOSFET is off. If the pre-charged MOSFET is off, there is no connection between the logic level zero and, sorry, logic level one and the output. Whereas if we observe this ground is connected to output because N1 MOSFET is also on, N2 MOSFET is also on, as well as evaluate MOSFET is also on. So because all the three MOSFETs are on, N MOSFETs are on, it acts as closed switch. So if it acts as closed switch, there is a definite connection established between the output and the ground, which is logic level zero. Hence, 
the output will be pulled down to logic level zero. That means when both the inputs are high, under evaluate technique, the output becomes equal to zero, which is as per the truth table of NAND gate. This is a simpler circuit which I have taken as example. Any kind of complicated circuit can also be designed using pre-charge and evaluate logic. The major advantage of using this pre-charge and evaluate logic is the number of MOSFETs which we use gets significantly reduced. I hope that you have understood this video lecture. Thank you.